bless you all. Thank you so much. Um, but it is so good. It's so wonderful, so good. And um, Pastor Grace asked me to share. Um, and if I'm honest with you, I was trying to run. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord. Um, but the Lord has laid something on my heart um, to share. And I'm hoping that I will, I'm not hoping, but I believe that God will um, minister through me. Um, Brother Keith, if you don't mind, would you replay that song, um, The King Has Come? Please, thank you. That song gets me every time that song if you listen to the words the, the power of those words and father god what a privilege and an honor to know you you are a good god you're good all the time sometimes our, our words fade us lord but you never fail and i just thank you for your goodness and your mercy because even in our brokenness, even in our pain that we carry, some things we do not even utter to people, but we carry inside. Father God, you see us and you know each and every one of us. Some of us have been walking with you for so long. And Father, we carry scars. Just like the song said hoping and believing and trusting in you still praising and saying you are lord regardless even in the pain even through the trials even through the pain and heaviness lord you are still god and god alone oh god we worship you father god you are worthy lord, thank you May your Holy Spirit come. Lord, not in righteousness have any of us had we're like filthy rags. But because of your grace and your mercy, your love, your love, that love, Father God, that that the love that we can't just about famine. Because even when we do our own thing, you still love us unconditionally. You said I have a broken heart, a controlled heart. You would not despise, oh God. Remember, as I come before you from no flesh to get the glory to minister your word, Father, have your way. What a privilege and an honour it is to dwell with you, Lord, to come before your throne, to be used by you, God, just to have a relationship. Father God, we praise you, we magnify your name. I pray with your word that I will be able to, your spirit will be able to minister your word, Father. God, oh, that song gets me every time because the words are so powerful. I've been walking, I've been having a, I've had a relationship with God for a very long time. And there's scars. I've gone through some things. Some things have been afflictions. Some things have been just outright disobedience. And there's consequences to those things in every decision that we make. He loves us so much. His love chastises us. His love um, overshadows us. His love will, as Pastor Grace said, will leave the 99 and come and look for you. Yeah. That's the kind of love that he has for us. Yeah. Because he's allowed us to be on earth he said before 
your mother and your father came to conceive you, no matter what that conception was, he said he already knew you were going to come on the earth. Yes. He had a, he had he already had a plan before you even knew who you were. He had a plan for your life and your existence is for a reason. Yes. You're here for a purpose. Thank you. Hallelujah. Not for any not for no reason. Even with your scars. Even with your scars, even with your mistakes. Yes. Even with your pain. Even with the, the thing that they say may people may look at you and judge you because of your disability, visibly or non-visibly. You may even judge yourself. But he's got a plan for your life and he has not given up on you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He has not given up on you. He cannot, he's not in his he's not even his nature. He's not in his nature to give up on you. Yes. He's a good God. He's tangible. He's real. He's not just a theory or theory that we just speak of. We serve a real tangible God, merciful, loving, kind. And he's waiting on us. He's waiting on us. Um, I wanted to share what came to my heart to share was from um, Jonah. I was thinking about Jonah and um and I the reason why I was the book of Jonah came to my mind. I think some of you may know um um the story of Jonah. Jonah is a very short book, it's from um chapter one to four, and um a very short story and um about Jonah. It's a Jonah was um Jonah was a prophet and um I was the the the, the I want I want to give a little bit of um I'm gonna I'm not gonna read the whole four chapters I'm gonna give a brief um overview and but the main part that I really want to um look at is when Jonah was swallowed in the belly of the fish yeah and um I think a lot of people will know that story. Um, even people who are not Christians, they may have heard of the story of Jonah swallowed up in the in the in the in the fish belly. Um, so what? Um, just to to say again, Jonah was a prophet. He had a relationship with God, and um, Jonah was asked. So the book of Jonah, chapter one, Jonah was Jonah was God came to Jonah and said to Jonah, "I need you to go." And minister to my people in their earth. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, but anybody can come and help me if you can. And um, he he was supposed to go and minister to these people because God was saying to him, "There's the 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 people then were so wicked, they're living in sin, they were carrying on terrible, and it it came to God's attention the the, the what was going on." You know, it was it, it came to God's attention, and I was trying to think, how did it come to God's attention like that? You know, in the in the Word of God, I can't remember where it is right now, but it says that when we worship God, when we worship Him, we sing songs, we're we're really trying to like, we're, and we're speaking he, he wonderful words to God. We're we're like it's like um, we're praising Him, and it says it's like He's like sweet, sweet smelling incense. To God's nostrils, when we worship, you know, when we worship Him, it, it, God can smell our worship. It's, there's a there's a aroma, you know, like how you get all the different perfumes and the, all the different colognes and all. Uh, each and every one, each I believe that each and every one of us has a particular scent when we are worshiping God, and there's aroma. And then I was thinking to myself, if so, also sin. Or living um, 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 an unclean life also has aroma, because the 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 the, 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 the those people were in so much disobedience and sin. God said to said to um, Jonah, "I need you to go down there 
I need you to minister to my go and minister to these people because they need to they need to be saved. They need to be they need to repent because God did not want to kill them. Yeah. Yeah, God did not want to kill them. God wanted wants God wanted to give them grace and mercy. He said, I want, I want to send you. Well, Jonah, when Jonah heard God, God, he was thinking, okay, you want me to send me to these people, the disobedient? I don't really want to go to these people. So in the evening, Jonah was reflecting and Jonah was not happy. A fear came over Jonah. He didn't want to go. He just didn't want to do it. He, he didn't want to do it. And um, it says that Jonah fled. Jonah fled. Um, he fled from God and um, he, he, he was now on the run. And <laughs> Jonah was on the run from God. It's it, kind of funny because you can't escape God. But <laughs> Jonah ran. It's so funny. When I think about it, I just thought, Jonah, you know, you lose it. That's a losing battle. Um, but Jonah was called. God called Jonah just like God has called you yeah. for a purpose. And you know, even if you know that even if you are a Christian and you're on the you're on the you're on the path and you have a relationship with God, you know God has told you to do something. If you reflect, there could be a few things God has told you to do. You either haven't done it yet because of fear, just like Jonah ran, or you have you you've obeyed but you haven't been consistent or you're you're not saved and you know god is calling you to become to him but you're you're on the run you're like i can't do it right now i'm not ready for this yet you're, you're constantly you're on the run yeah. but jonah also was on the run and when Jonah was on the run, it says in, um, so Jonah was on the run. So Jonah ran where he ran to. Jonah went or Jonah went to, um, um, Jonah went on a boat. There's all these other people on the boat. And, and I'm kind of like phrasing it. Please do go and read um, Jonah. It's a very short book. Um, but I'm just summarizing because I want to get to um, the point. Um, so Jonah goes on the boat with all these other people and they sail in and all of a sudden a storm hits because God was not happy with Jonah. So there was a storm that hit the boat on the sea. There was a storm. It was roaring. Now all the other people on the boat were panicking. They were praying to their God. They didn't want to sink. They didn't want to die. But Jonah was very, Jonah was asleep and they had to wake Jonah up. Jonah was found asleep. <laughs> And they actually had to wake up Jonah. Imagine. Yeah. So Jonah wakes up. He sees them all panicking. And they say to Jonah, can you pray to your God? Because they need to find out like where all this calamity is coming from. Because they knew something went right. Yeah. And in this story, you can unpick so much things. That I've got so, so much things to unpick in that part. But I'm not going to go there. But Jonah then said to them that he knew why. He, he prayed. He, he he said, I, I know why this happened. God is not happy with me. And the only how you're going to stop this um, um, roar is if you if you push me over, if you um, push me over the um, boat into the water. Mm -hmm. And they was thinking that they couldn't do that because they're thinking, oh, my God, how can we do this to you? Obviously, they're thinking that he might get, you know, die or something might happen to him. But anyway, finally, they pushed Jonah into the sea. And then as Jonah was falling into the sea, Jonah got swallowed up by the fish. Jonah got swallowed up by the fish. And I was thinking about that. So Jonah was on the run. He was disobedient. He didn't want to do what God wanted to. He didn't want to submit to the spirit of God. Isn't it that like sometimes the flesh, when God tells us to do certain things or, you know, on this journey, when I think about, you know the disciplines that you have you to have not in it's not in the way of um the way god's love is it's not forceful just like how when you're trying to speak to your children and you're 
you can see that they're going in the wrong path and you're trying to encourage them um, to do it like this and they also, they don't want to do it. There, there's that resistance and God is trying to advise you to, if you do it this way, if you obey me, this is, you're, you're, I'm going to use you for my glory and, and not only are you ministering to those people, but I'm using you and through me using you, you would also be better. But Jonah um, ran from the call, just like some of us are running from the call. And, and and just like the song was singing, even in your even even in this even when you're in a place of question in your heart, even when you feel broken and and um, trodden for those who are um 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 in the Lord and um or it could be um um. You're in the Lord, or you're a minister. You're, you know, you're you 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 know. You don't have to have any title, but you're just a Christian. You're walking the walk, and there's calamities. There's things that's happened. There's some things that you can't even tell people. You don't even speak it. Some things you may have shared, and you're struggling. You struggle even in yourself in certain areas. And knowing that even in that place, that God is your strength. Even with the scars, he still he still looks at you um, without scars. He's a he's a mender, and when you obey him, even when you're carrying that cross and it's painful, and you don't want to carry the cross, you want to you want to throw the cross down. Sometimes that's the real honest. You want to throw because the weight feels so heavy. It feels so heavy at times. And you want to throw it down. And you don't want to pray. You don't want to read the Bible. You don't want to worship. And you're saying sometimes, God, this is heavy. I don't want to do this anymore. And then another part of you says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. You are a merciful God and I need your strength. Because in my weakness, you said that you are strong. Yeah. And right now I need your strength. Yes. When people see you, they see strength. They want to lean on you. And that's good because the strength that they're seeing is not your strength. It's God's. Because if they knew behind closed doors when you are the one, the strongest ones are the ones that cry out. Yeah. Who will curl up in their beds or lay prostrate and say and scream out and cry out to God for strength. I'm speaking to those people today, those ones who who carry the weight of your family, you carry the weight because God has uphold you in position. But you're human, you're a human being, you feel. And it's only by God's grace that is holding you. Yeah. You're the you're you could be a single mother. And you got to carry that weight. You could be a, a you could be even um, a, 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 a brother who 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 a, 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 a man of God, and you have to carry the weight of your for your family, husbands, the provider, the protector. You could be a wife. You got to, you got to carry your husband your, your your you carry your husband your children your grandchildren responsibilities of business and just the responsibility of everything and just also trying to be in tune with yeah. God and say am I doing what you've called me to do am I on the right path yeah. But we serve such a wonderful, even with your scars, God is able to use you. Even when you've had had doubt, God is able to use you. Your scars show that you have maturity. It's a reminder that you've gone through a few things. Yeah. Or olive has to be crushed to bring forth oil. Yeah. The gold has to go through fire yes. to be melted into whatever shape it has the diamond is dug out of dirt 
then it has to be cut, refined, then to be put on the a bottle of wine that is is a mature had to be left for, uh, for a while, had to have had to have, had to be left for a little while. And that place of the belly when Strona was swallowed up. Jonah was in darkness. Jonah went into darkness when he was swallowed up by the by those fish belly. Can you imagine being swallowed up in a fish belly? That must have stunk. Must have smelt so bad. He must have been full of fear. He that he's stagnant, no movement, still, worried, frustrated. And that's like some of us when we don't obey God because it's evidence that we're not in the right place and it's and and I believe that in the fish belly that Jonah had to be in a place of reflection for three days and three nights just like Jesus died doesn't he three days three nights he, 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 uh, the third day sorry third day he arose right Jonah had to go there it's like it was like it was like death must have been horrible. And then what I, I believe that Jonah had to come to himself, like some of us, like myself, on the run, don't want to do anything, don't want to, I just, I'm tired. Yeah. I don't want to really, I don't really, you know, yeah, I read my Bible, yeah, I can remember a few scriptures. I don't want to do this. I don't really, I want to just, I, you know what, I don't, man, some of your people, Lord, I've experienced some of your people, man, Jesus, they're just too much. They've hurt me in the past. I've been hurt by church people. I can't, I don't trust nobody again. And I'm just keeping myself to myself. Like Jonah in the fish belly. Stagnant. No movement, really. And I had to, you had to come to yourself. I had to come to yourself. Jonah had to come to himself. And say, do you know what? I, I, I don't want this. In verse in in chapter two of Jonah, Jonah cries out to the Lord because yes. of my. It says here, "I cry out to the Lord because of my affliction," and He answered me out of the belly. Right out of the fish belly, Jonah cried out. You heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the floods surround me. All your belief. Um, oh God, I can't read that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, verse. Can somebody help me in verse three, please? Of Jonah chapter two. No, I can read that. Read. I'll, I'll read from Thank you, Brother Keith. And said, I cried for reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I. And though um, and, and thou heardest my voice, for thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about me. By thy, thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Do you want me to read on? Yeah, continue to verse nine, please. Yeah. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward the holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even the soul. The deepest, the depth closed me around about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. Just to verse five. Continue. Was that first nine? First, first, oh, right. first nine you wanted me to. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from the corruption. O Lord, my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They have observed lying vanities, forsake their own mercy, 
but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that what I have vowed. Salvation Amen. Lord. Salvation is the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Keith. And 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 that was Jonah had to come to himself. In that in in that part there, Jonah was crying out to God because he realized that all that fear that he had, or even his biases not to go and to do what God has called him to do. He didn't want to stay in that place of stagnity. He didn't want to stay in darkness. He didn't want to smell that horrible. He knew that they were, he tasted and knew that God was good. He had a relationship prior to this situation and he knew that it was better for him. And in verse 10, it says, so the Lord spoke to the fish. So God spoke to the situation. The Lord spoke to the fish and it vomit Jonah into the dry land so God spoke to the fish and let Jonah free and then Jonah experienced joy and gladness he re he was in he repented of his sins he repented he experienced all the opposite things to what he experienced in when he was in the fish belly so when we are doing when we're on that journey and we succumb like when I said to myself I repented to question God I had to come away from my pity party um because my life when, when we gave our lives to the Lord it's it's it, my life is no longer my own I have to I serve God I I have to be in surrender so I God took me through a, a journey of that love for salvation again that love for his word, the love of the, the hunger and the thirst in after him, after righteousness, just after reading his word. And, and I said to myself, I need to read your word more. I need to read your word. So reading God's word is to get to know him. What is he asking of me? And um, when when trials come and test me, because the enemy does not want us to do this work even to deliver this word this morning if you ever knew what took place in my home yesterday evening it was just like it, it was crazy and then there had to be a calm you know and I what I've realized that sometimes what happens is that when we're walking on this walk the rage when you the evidence to knowing that you are on this path your your life is not always smooth that's the evidence that you are walking or you are on the right path because that's the that's for me that's the evidence because the enemy does not want you to arise he doesn't he's the, the word of god said that he can he come to still kill still and destroy and it's not a joke it's real but God said that he came to give us life and give it more abundantly, to live an abundant life, to live an enriched life. I'm not talking about a religious life. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with, with the Father and, and, and knowing what you're called, what, what, are you, what are you here to do on the earth, the purpose why we are here. And as we journey, and I had to surrender to God. And I I I did I never I didn't want Bible study. I didn't want to do Bible studies. I wasn't in I did not want to do Bible studies. I did not want to do anything. All I wanted to do is just look after me and my kids. That was it. I've been in church for a long time. I've been in church for when I first got saved, four, four times a week in church. I lived practically in church. Been in um, the um, the evangelist ministry, children's ministry. I, I I've seen the move of God, the gift of healing, the gift of word, the gift of prophecy. All of these things, beautiful experiences, can never like. There's nothing like it. But falling down in sin, backsliding, and giving God wishy washy time, and thinking that. 
um, whatever, what if well, the quality, what you put in is what you will get out. And that's what God has been showing me over the years. And he's been merciful to me. He's been merciful to me. You're talking to, um, have I been a backslider in church? Yes. And I'm, I'm not promoting backslidden. I'm just sharing my journey. When I first came to God, I was 20 years old and I had a son who was six years old. You can do the maths. I was in church for seven years and then I backslid. And I was in a relationship for six years and I conceived two children. Beautiful children, beautiful children. God's blessed me with three beautiful children. But in my disobedience and my backsliddenness, I had to pay a price for those things. Don't, it, it wasn't just plain sailing. There's a few things I had to go through and learn, but in it all, God has been merciful to me. He really has. And have I made other mistakes um, um, journeying? Yes, I have. And, 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 and I had to learn, regardless of my walk and the things that I do or the things that come, I had to just know that, that you can't be on the run. You have to surrender that flesh would want to do everything outside of God's will for your life. And it has to have discipline. What have God is when you sit, when you think, when you personally all think, remind yourself of the things that God has told you to do. God's spoken to me simple things. Not it hasn't been like um extra and ordinary things. It's one of the main things is eat right. God's told me how to eat right. He's been talking to me about my diet. Basic. Your temple is the is, is, is a temple. Your body is a temple that the Holy Spirit wants to dwell in. So he's going to tell you how to keep that body healthy. Exercise. That could just be going to, going for a walk for 20 minutes every day. It doesn't have you don't have to go to the gym. Just move. And it's good for your mental health. Mental health is priority. Because that's where the battlefield is. That's where the enemy tries us. If you need motivation and you need people, God, pray and ask God for them. God will send them to you. I can testify of that. He will. There'll mm -hmm. be that one person that he will, he will, even, it doesn't have to be, you don't need a crowd. You just need one person and God will send them to you. Whatever it is that you need. He will not give you a task. He will not say to you, come to me. I've got a plan for your life and not give you the resources that you need. Yes. He will give you everything that you need. Just like how we told Jonah to go and do it. Jonah was full of faith, went about his business. They didn't want to do it. But God's, God's spirit was in Jonah. Jonah had to go and minister to those people to repent. Give your life to Jesus. You cannot go to heaven if you do not give your life to Jesus. This is the Bible says, confess Romans 10 9. You gotta confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and God. I'm not talking that salvation doesn't mean you must go to church every week. I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to church because the word of God says you should be around the bridge in to fellowship. You have to it, it, fellowship. Right, because iron sharpens iron. You, you know, but but you, if you think you 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 can search all over. I've searched all over. There's a few that you know. There is nothing compared to having a relationship with God. There ain't nothing compared, and the enemy will lie to us and make us think there's uh, there's something else. There's nothing more sweeter than being in God's presence and in His Word. And also in the fellowship of the bridging. So that's why I've re I've surrendered to God, like Jonah. I had to like say, I don't like stagnancy no more. I don't like that I'm in this place of, I know there's more because I've tasted and know that God is good. He's used me. He's used me. When I think about the things that I've experienced spiritually, ain't nothing can't come. That's why one of the things for me that the enemy can't come to me and say to me, God is not real. Because I have experienced him on another level. 
He can't say to me, God don't love me because me go through so much things and God still love me. I know that God is unconditional. I can speak from that place because I know what I've gone through and what I've journeyed through. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've journeyed through, if you repent and you ask God for forgiveness, he says that he will forgive you and everything's white, clean, and you press on towards him. We serve a mercy for God. And that's why I'm opening my home for Bible study. Because why? Because I need accountability. I want to be in the word. But I want to be in the word with a few people. It doesn't have to be a big, I'm not looking for a big crowd of people to be in the word. But even if God sends the one so I can be accountable to be in the word with me and my children, we need the word. We need to fill ourselves with the word of God. Why do we need, why Cheryl, why do I need to read the word of God? Because you need to read the word so that you know God's word. That when calamity comes, when the storm, storm is roaring, you know the word to speak to that situation. And and that and that storm should that storm storm will 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 will, 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 will cease. Just like Pastor Grace was speaking about, when you speak to that with storm, it will cease because that's the power of your words, and you're and you're knowing the scripture that says that. Or when you're not when you, when you're when you're when you're not motivated to do certain things, you know there's a scripture that you can stand on. You don't have to read right when you're reading the Bible. Some things, some scriptures will just stick out. It could just be a word. My yokes are easy. My yokes are easy and my burdens are light. When you're feeling that things are too much, you that's that that scripture was that one word, my yokes are easy and my burdens are light. That carried me through university. Mm -hmm. I'm a severe dyslexic. Mm -hmm. And I stood on that word, and God made me graduate 2015. With a BA honors. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He said that he would take the foolish things off this earth and he will confine the wise. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will take your nothing and he will make it something. You're running like Jonah. Don't run no more. Surrender yourself. Give your life to Jesus. Surrender to the to the will of God. He's asked you to do something. You're in. you you. The Lord said He's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. All hell could be breaking loose. You've got pain in your body. You've got to contend with every day. I understand that because that's what I do. You've got children whose behavior is all over the place. That's what I contend with every day. And I sometimes feel like I don't even want to do that. I don't even want to be a mum half of the time. But I'm like, God, it's only by your grace. It's only by your grace. Father, grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Father, I desired this and I, it hasn't come yet. Grace and mercy. But do you know what? Even in the midst of my trials, do you know what I said? I'm surrendering to God's will. I don't care what is going on. I'm not going to think I need perfection before I do. No, I don't care. I just said, do you know what? I, my, you know what? What I'm not like I surrender, and nothing needs to be perfect. I'm just doing your will. You told me to do A and B. I'm I bite one day at a time. Just one day at a time. And in this day, I'm gonna say I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be. I'm. Gonna, this is what you told me to do. I need you to help me, Lord. You've told me to. I need to. I I need to. I need to surrender to you. I don't want to be in this fish belly no more. I need to come out of this fish belly. I need to come out of stagnity. My, my vision is blurry now. But when I surrender to you and I say, yes, Lord, do you know what? It's not in my own strength. I'm going to take one step. Okay, you said to me, I've got to, my diet. I need to drink more water in my day. Okay, I've got a bottle. I know that at least two litres a day I need to be drinking. I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. This is my day. And you're on your way to obedience. OK, then, Lord, you said to me that you've given me a plan Um, you've, you're sending me. I need to do this and I, I need to Um, I need to you, you, you've you given me a plan. OK, Habakkuk 2, 2 says, write the vision down and make it plain. OK, if I write it down, I'm on my way to obedience. I'm on my way to surrendering to you. All hell is breaking loose in my life, Lord God, and I'm trying to concentrate on you. But do you know what? Surrender to me. Focus on me. 
do what I've asked you to do one day at a time, even if it's just to read a scripture, to build up your faith, to strengthen you. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I can speak of that. Because I've been in disobedience and God has, he, he says that he, he chastised those he loves. I want him to love me. I don't want God to ever stop running me down. I don't want him to ever stop chastising me if I'm doing something wrong. Help me to reflect, help us, Father God, to reflect on you. Father God, help us to stop running when you've called us to salvation. Some of you, God has called you to salvation. He wants you to surrender, but you're fighting it because you're saying to yourself, do you know what? I don't want to give up this. I don't want to give up that. And I, that means if I come to you, I've got to do all this. It, 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 that, that's, that, that's not true. When you just come and you give your life to God, to God and you just say to him I surrender to you and I want to be in your word and I want to understand this word and I want to be around people who can help me to understand the word you find a, 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 um, um, a, a, a Bible believing teaching place it could be church it could be a prayer meeting wherever God leads you to 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 discover his words it's a journey it's not an overnight wonder it's a journey it's a relationship and along the way you will grow and there'll be certain things you don't want to do anymore. And there's, and, and along the journey, you may slip your foot and fall, but you repent, you get up. And as Pastor Grace said very articulately, which is so true, is that you can fall, but to get up. Because you, if you imagine, imagine, because I'm a big girl. So when I think about me slipping down, if I'm thinking about it in that kind of, um, um, practical way if I fall down this, you know when there's a saying that says the, the bigger they are the harder they fall so you, you fall that's that, and to get up <laughs> it's hard it can be very difficult and, and you think about that in a, in a way of spiritually or you fall in sin or you, you do something wrong God just wants you to the repentance and it's just a whole reflection on yourself so that he can use you so that you can minister to his people your life is a is, is is your life is what he wants to use to minister to others so they can be come to repentance and give their lives to christ or have a more deeper relationship with christ and then and then that god won't have to god god because god doesn't want anyone to perish that i think this is what jonah this is what god was saying to jonah god doesn't want no one to perish god wants anyone to have eternal life we get so caught up on this earth and all the things that are going on, technology, swiping every minute. I'm telling you, all, you know, those things are good, but it can also be a very big distraction. God wants us to have a personal relationship with him. Nothing more sweeter. There's mysteries that he wants to share. The things that God will download to you, the, your gifts and your talents, that he wants to, he want you got you got spiritual gifts. Yeah. I, I will say to you, do you know what they are? Do you walk in them? He wants us to make a change on this earth. Imagine that we serve the most high God, the ruler of heaven and earth. Oh, the one who can touch the mind and heart of every man to, to favor you. He can just, he can download something to you or to change the whole course of a whole generation that people will come to him and be saved and set free. He wants to use you. You have got a gift of healing. He wants to, he wants to heal some people. He, people need love out here. And we we need to be we need to we need to obey like Jonah did in the end, so that mm -hmm. he can use us in whichever way he chooses to. Father, we just thank you right now. Thank you, Lord, for your word, and I'm praying that your word um, will minister and touch your people, Father God. And I don't, I, I don't know what, 
the, 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 the word is like a seed and I just pray that it will it will go into the hearts of your people that your Holy Spirit will water it and that it will grow further and it will bear healthy fruit it will bear healthy fruit I pray for salvation for, for your people I pray for salvation for those who need salvation to know you some people may have had family members or friends or they're looking outward and they're discouraged by maybe Christians, but they have to know that Christians are human beings. We're human beings. We make mistakes. And it's not about what it's not, it's not about people. It's about you yourself giving your life to Christ and repenting. There is an afterlife. You have to choose heaven or hell. There's no in between. And for those of us, Father God, who are on that walk, help us to be great examples. Not through our own flesh, but by your spirit. We can't do anything of our own. And all the scars that we own, all the things that we've gone through, all the things that we can feel embarrassed about or shamed, all the things that we've had fear and doubt about, Father, those are those are areas that we can, when we overcome and you fill us with faith, that we can speak to people who feels it, knows it. We can minister to your people, Father, and bring hope and bring love and bring change that you want for your people. Salvation is your love for people. That's the main call of all of every Christian, regardless of all the gifts and talents. He says love and then also salvation. Father, I thank you for all that you're doing here. I thank you for the gifts for, for each and every person here. A, each and every person that's listening. I pray, Father God, to that dry bones, you will speak again, Lord. That you will make them arise, Father God. Lord, I pray that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit, Father God. Father God, I pray that you will put praise back in their heart and in their mouth, Father God. Father God, that you will speak to their situation, Father God. Lord God, let them mount up like eagles, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let them soar, Lord God. Father God, that person that's full of pain in their body, Father God, may there be healing, Father God, in the name of Jesus, in their mind, in their emotion, in their spirit, Father God. Father God, that person that feels cast down, Father God, or forgotten, Father God. Father God, let them arise, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh Father God. Bring mm -hmm. healing to their mind, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, fill them to the overflow, Father God. That person that's constantly serving, Father God, and feels overwhelmed and tired, Father God, fill them anew and fresh, oh God, that they would overflow over, oh God. Give them strategies, oh God. Give them, Father God, the, the mysteries, Father God, for what they need to do, oh God. Father God, for that person, Father God, that's in financial difficulty, Lord God. You are, you said that you are Jehovah Jireh, that you meet all the needs. You will meet the needs of your, you said all the riches in glory, Father God, that you will meet their needs, oh God in the name of jesus father god i thank you lord god father god you've been struggling to to start something that god says now is the time to do it trust his word in the name of jesus oh god find somebody to pray with find somebody you, you you're battling don't keep it to yourself don't be isolated that's what the enemy wants rebuke him find somebody that you can talk to just oh you, you don't have to tell your whole family prayer i need you to pray for me i need you to pray for me if somebody is laid on your heart you know people have been laying on your heart minister phone them text them if not pray for them father god i just pray i just we break out we're no longer bound no more chains holding us Father God, our soul is rested. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Free us from this bondage, Father God. We're not bound anymore. We are free because of your word. We're free because of salvation. We're free because of what you've given us, oh God. We're free, Lord God, to, to walk in you, to, to be ministered to, to receive, to, to give, Father God. Have your way in us, Lord God. We plead the blood of Jesus over our children. We cover them in the blood 
blood of Jesus. Father God, have your way over our children and our grandchildren, oh God. Take your place in them, oh God. For this is a wicked world, Father God. There's strongholds that need to be broken, Father. Generational curses need to be broken. Father God, people are working witchcraft and they're going to be a man and putting curses on people, Father God, and burning candles, Father God, uh, and going to and doing all kinds of manners of earth. And we come against these things in the name of Jesus. Uh, for you said in your words, our warfare is not carnal, but mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, we pull, pull in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus over our homes, uh, the blood of Jesus over our children, uh, the blood of Jesus over our coming and going. Going, the blood of Jesus over our finance in our workplace, in our schools, uh, the blood of Jesus in our generation, the blood of Jesus over our children's children's children. We're speaking to our children now, but we're speaking to our grandchildren and our children's children's children. You will be saved. You will repent. You will know God for yourself in the name of Jesus. You will know the real God. You will be saved and set free. You will fulfill the call of God. You will not die before for your time. We come against the spirit of death. You will not die before your time in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your word, Lord God. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Father. Who is there like you, oh God? There is none. Father God, we surrender to you, Lord God. We surrender to the corner. We thank you for healing of the mind and spirit and soul and body. We thank you, Father God, because when you said it, it shall be done. Salvation is the children's bread. Hallelujah, glory. Glory to God. Father God, we need a revelation, Father God. We need an intercession, Father God, for our children. We need something in this end times, Father God. Raise up your children. Raise up the women and men of God. Raise up young people. Raise up our children in the nursery. Let them speak doves say of the Lord. Let them touch the children in the primary school. Let them speak doves say of the Lord. Touch the children in the secondary school. Let them say doves say of the Lord. Touch the children, Father God, in the colleges and in the universities. Doves say of the Lord. Father God, whatever the gift is are, let them speak thus say of the Lord. If they're in music, if they're in creativity, let them speak thus say of the Lord. Let them not be ashamed of the glory of God. Let them not be ashamed of the God. Let them not be said, those who are ashamed of you, you will be ashamed of them. But if we speak of your goodness and of your mercy, you said it will be evident, oh God. And we thank you right now, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We magnify you. We thank you that you're sovereign and that you're Lord and that they're your God. And there is none like you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank you. Taking off the sackcloth Taking up the spirit of heaviness for the government of praise. I praise you, oh God. People that I don't feel to praise you. I magnify you. It's not a feeling, it's a knowing. Father of God, hallelujah. Take your place, oh Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I magnify your name, Lord God. We lift you up, Lord God. Oh, for the four corners of the earth, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we'll never be the same. We'll never go back. No, no, no longer going back to sin. No longer going back to stagnity. No longer going back, Father God. We'll continue to run this race. We'll continue to run this race until we see your face, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Sika Robo Shakaya Makar Robo, He Mama Machine and Mama Rabba Bashakaya, Oh Robo Shakaya Makar Robo, arise in the name of Jesus, arise in the name of Jesus, arise in the name of Jesus, Sika Robo Shakaya, Oh Hallelujah, oh glory to God, we thank you, Jesus, we thank you, you've given us power. Through the Holy Spirit, we're overcomers. In the name of Jesus, we're healed and we're no longer bound. We thank you for the glory, Father. We thank you because we can't do it without you. We need you, Father. Oh, God, we need you, Jesus. 
Jesus. We need you like never before, Father God, to give us the way to go, insight and foresight, Father God. We need a discerning spirit in this end times, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you're raising up an army, Father God, in this end times, and you're not playing with the church. No more playing church, oh God. Oh, God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, Jesus, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 I can feel the joy amongst them coming down in my soul. Hallelujah. 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 I can feel the joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In my soul, hallelujah, hallelujah. I can feel the joy of my Zion. It's coming down in my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for sitting the show this morning, Father. Thank you, Father, for using your daughter. Hallelujah. Thank you for using it to Thank speak you, to our hearts. You, Lord, to bring your word to us. Hallelujah. As quick as me this Thank morning you, to greater things concerning your kingdom. And hallelujah. The hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you this morning for our dear sister Sherry. You, May your will continue to be done in her by the power of your Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for my brothers and sisters this morning whose hearts and minds you have touched Jesus. by the power of the Holy Spirit. But we know it's not by might, not by power, oh glory, but it is Hallelujah. by your spirit. And so we thank you for touching our lives and quickening us, Hallelujah. quickening this mortal body unto you. Hallelujah. Quickening us unto you much more for the honor and the glory of your name. And I praise you and I thank you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but God has spoken. Amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. No more running. No more stagnancy. That's what that's what came to me. No more stagnancy. Jonah was running, he was fearful. He was disobedient. He was in rebellion. God had clearly spoken to him and he, 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 he said, no, he's not, he's not going to do it. It's, he totally disobeyed God. And when we're in rebellion, there's lots of things that will happen to us. With lots of things that will come upon us. When we're out of God's will, we're we're out on a limb. We're not under God's covering anymore. God, God has taken his hand off of us because we're in total rebellion. And you can see that Jonah kept running and running until he, he couldn't run anymore until he found himself in the belly of the, the whale, the fish. Did you hear what he said? Jonah cried out to God, he asked God. He called out in 
out in my trouble and in my distress. He called out in the middle of his trouble and his distress. In the, out of the belly of the well, he cried for help. And you heard my voice. When God, when we cry unto God and say, God, that's it. I surrender. <laughs> I give up. I'm not going to run anymore. I, 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 I've, I've, I've run and I've got myself in a big mess. This is what he said. He said, you cast me into the deep, into the deep heart of the sea. The current surround, surrounded and engulfed me. All the breakers of billows of the waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Nevertheless, I will look again towards your holy temple. When you realize that you're in a mess and it's only God alone can get you out of this mess, God was God is still merciful, like Cheryl said. She has made some mistakes, but God has been merciful. And even when we run and we mess up, God is still merciful. We can cry out and God will hear us. And God delivered Jonah out of that situation. Imagine the whale came and vomited him up. That's what it says in verse 10. The Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah up onto the dry land. <laughs> The fish came out of the water into dry land just to vomit up Jonah on a safe, dry place. Isn't God great? I don't know about you this morning, but God has really spoken through our sister. Cheryl, I just want to say thank you. God bless you. I can see why the enemy didn't want you to say this word. I can see why. Everything was against you to, to deliver this word, but thank you, Holy Spirit, for this word. It's really spoken into our hearts this morning. It's, it's better to obey than sacrifice. It's better to obey God than to having to cry out to God to deliver us out of our mess. So I just want to thank you, Cheryl. God bless you so much. This word has really, really uh, spoke volumes this morning. I'm telling you, God has really spoken. And I know that every single person can share the same testimony, how God has spoken. Something that Cheryl said resonated with you. And I know that for me, I wrote down a couple of things. It said, we need to come out. We need to come out of the fish belly. <laughs> we need to come out because sometimes we're trapped where we are and it doesn't look like there's no way out. There's no escape. But we, we need to ask God to take us out of our situation and, and really just surrender. Just surrender. Surrender to God. No more bondages. No more setback, no more strongholds, no more traps, no more hindrances. Just obey God and see what God will do. I just thank you, Cheryl, for this word. And I know that um, this word has gone, come straight from the heart of God. This was heartfelt and it's true. Every single word of it was true. And thank you for sharing about Jonah. This is a book that oftentimes get missed but it's so so important to of Jonah he had a, he had a he had a mission on his life he had a plan and a purpose he had something to deliver but he, fear fear is what can grip us and help and stagnate us and hold us bound because of fear so I just want to thank God that as Cheryl prayed to, re, to, re, to rebuke every spirit of fear and every stagnancy 
and every hindrance and every bondage and anything that's holding us trapped where we are, that we'll be able to move forward and we're able to um, obey God because there's consequences. There's consequences for disobedience. The whole ship was, was in turmoil. Everybody around you will be affected because of you, because of your disobedience. Your disobedience can affect other people. Everybody on that boat was in turmoil and it was because of one person. So you, this is telling us that because of our disobedience, we can create havoc where we are. But we don't want to do that. We want to be obedient and we want to surrender to God. I'm just going to go to Keith as he's got his hand up. Keith, Bless you. Uh, uh, go ahead. Very sound, sound. word that's needed. Um, you know me as I like to talk a lot, but there's a song that's been resonating and I'm actually going to sing it. I don't normally, I'd normally keep this to myself. But like you were saying, you've kind of unctioned me. It's a known song that we all know, but um, yeah, I'll just stop dithering, <laughs> stop running, and I will go ahead and do so. He is jealous for me. A love's like a hurricane. I am a tree. Bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh... How he loves us so, oh, how he loves us, how he loves us so. And oh, how he loves us so, oh, how he loves us. How he loves us all. And yeah, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves And we are his portion, and he is our prize. A drum to redemption by grace in his eyes. If grace is an ocean. We all sink in. And heaven greets earth with a sloppy wet kiss. My heart turns violently, beats in my chest. I don't have time to maintain regrets when I think about the way. Oh, he loves us. Oh, how. Oh, how he loves. Oh, how he loves. One more time. Oh, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves. See, that song was just resonating through my head. It's the part where he talks about the oceans. It's the part that he talks about the grace in his eyes, that despite the Jonah illustration, I just wanted to leave that with you. I've been singing this all day for the past eight days. I just want to leave that with you and let that song reveal itself, the revealed truth within that, from what we've just heard in ministry. I'll just leave it at that. God bless you all.
Thank you, Keith. Such a beautiful, beautiful song, beautiful voice, beautiful words. Oh, how he loves us. He loves us in spite of us, in spite of us, in spite of us running, in spite of us rebelling, in spite of us going our own way, despite of us, he still loves us. He still loves us. Oh. How he loves us. Thank you, Lord. Zima, go ahead. Sorry. Hi. Oh, wow. Um, it's a word that I needed to hear, Michelle. You, you, you use your vessel to deliver the word. It was so powerful. Jonah is one of my favorite stories, which Mia knows, and I remind her, and she goes through with it. And my friend, about three years ago, um, was dropping me to the airport, and we we always talk about the Bible stories and stuff. And she was talking to Sam, and they were in the car for five years, five hours, five years, five hours, and um. He said, I'm going to give you a task. Read the story of Jonah. And then I want you to do right about what you read. And I feel like if he did that, he may have seen, he didn't do it. He didn't, he didn't continue. But would that still be like where the storm has been building up in Zion? And also like where, where the ship, we're the people that's on the ship, which is the family, and how it's affecting every one of us. Yep. And he can't see you. And no matter how much time you think, yeah, he's been sitting in that belly of the well. Can't you see the stink? Can't you see the smell? Can't you see that God's still loving you? He's keep on reaching out to you. So Sister Cheryl, I have to say, like, I will continue with the word and finding that and God has been so faithful and he's been on time where he brought me my spiritual prayer family that I can pray where I feel weak for me to lift me back up to pray for, for Siam because he doesn't know and he's running from it I'm he's even got me kind of running from him I'm kind of like at the same time I'm not running because sometimes God has to leave. We, we want God to do the work, but we keep on going and aiding him and keep on running to his, when he's making a mess. But I've stopped and I've had to back off because how is he going to see if I'm always putting the Band-Aid on it? You know, um, I've got to let God do his work in him before he's my child, he's his. So we're all created by our father and that's who we need to turn to and i can pray that Simon will get revelation and he will see what god has been trying to show him right throughout and the lessons will carry on coming if we don't listen and we become disobedient and think that it's in our will just like what happened with jonah he tried to run away because he, he was scared to deliver the message to them and he said oh they're going to beat me up oh they're not going to listen to me Oh, they're going to do this and whatever. And he was worried about the backlash of what the people in Nineveh would have done to him. But then when he did deliver the message, they listened. And he was shocked to see that he didn't even have to work too hard. He didn't have to, he, they started listening to him and they gave up their earthly goods and stuff and whatnot. But then Jonah, in the end, he wasn't happy because he still wanted God to punish them. He said, oh, but you said you were going to destroy them. And then he had to te teach him. But they've changed their ways. So should you not have that greater mercy that I have for you? Like I took you out the belly of the well. You know, so. But yeah, Sister Cheryl, that was so powerful. There was so much nuggets in there. Um, and I also have to be obedient. And I also have to let my hand off of it and let God do what he has to do you know because as a mother we always want to run to the, our children's aid you know um, just like 
what God does for us for our lessons that we have to just um you know listen and obey and stop doing what we're doing before they say God look at your matter in your eye before you go and look at the matter in somebody else's and um, where we have made mistakes in our past that how we learn from it and mental health it, with stresses of life some youngsters can't cope with it and they've got a lot of pressure um and all I can do is say yeah you know I know that I have to stand firm in God that he will deliver my son and he would bring the peace the storm to a peace and stand still and you know um yeah thank you so much anyway for the word God bless you and keep on doing what God's put in you. You know, you're mighty still of God. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Um, bless you, um, Seema. Um, thank you for uh, sharing and just uh, sharing, sharing your perspective and uh, what... Uh, what Cheryl spoke about um, this morning. And I praise God for you, Cheryl. Thank you for your obedience. Um, I was very attentive to what you were sharing. And uh, it's, um, a, it's a topic that I have addressed. Um, it's a scripture that I've addressed before. And uh, the 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 um, background of it is that um, the Ninevites were uh, a ruthless people, and uh, they were uh, they had no um, mercy on their enemies. They would torture them and uh, display them, even the bodies that were that they killed, and uh, and so from the perspective of uh, the, the instruction that was given to Jonah. Um, Jonah, from his perspective, thought that they didn't deserve to be, <laughs> they didn't deserve to be um, delivered. They didn't deserve to be saved. They didn't deserve to ex experience the, the grace and the mercy of God. And so, um, you know, it, it, you know what it is, it's so easy to oftentimes uh, judge situations um, from a perspective of, from a human perspective rather from a God's perspective. And God's mercies, they're new every morning. But for his mercy, where would we be? You see, and it's so important to know that God is great in his love and his mercy towards mankind and uh, as the word of god said he's not slack concerning his promises for he wishes that none should perish but all should come to repentance but so yes is a is a is a god of judgment but the god that we continually see expressed throughout the scriptures is a god of love and a God of mercy. And uh, so he sent Jonah on an assignment. He was called for an assignment to preach as a prophet, to preach to the Ninevites so that they would receive God. They would accept the grace that was being given by God towards them so that they would become his people, that they would worship him father father god and um but uh, <laughs> jonah decided as many of us often make decisions that you know what i don't i don't concur with your opinion i don't concur with um that side aspect of your grace or your mercy and love i don't agree with that so you know what let me just uh, not take up the appointment. Let me do my own thing. And he's tried to run away. So he's set his uh, 
his eyes towards Tarshish to go in the opposite direction. And you see, when, see, God is such a God. And I, I'm just ex reaching, uh, reaching out to the whole platform here. I'm just saying, God is great in his mercy and so great in his love. We don't, we don't know the height, the breadth, the length, and the depth of his love towards us. Is that God will do anything to bring us to a place of repentance so that we turn back to him and that we commit ourselves in totality to him. And so God had a mission not only to minister and speak to the heart of Jonah, but also to save the Ninevites. And so he was to kill two birds with one stone. And so by virtue of that, though Jonah was in complete rebellion towards God's commission for him to go to Nineveh, Nineveh he, God would turn the situation around so that in his rebellion and disobedience, he would find himself <laughs> in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights. And uh, not knowing, in other words, whilst he was on this ship going, and you know what happens, and I'm just sharing this, and, and I'm just um, adding to what uh, Cheryl um, shared this morning. Sometimes we don't realize how much other people are dependent on what God has really called us to do. And we may, we may want to be in our comfort zone and say, you know what, I don't want to do this because you know what, I have my own agenda. I have my own mindset. I have my own um, views as regards to this. So I don't want to reach out. God may be telling you to reach out to a different culture or a certain type of people. Um, or you, it might be re, um, telling you to reach out to a different race. What are you going to do then? Or in other words, reach out to uh, people that from a godly perspective will be the extremes of the extreme. He may be saying to you, I want you to intercede on, these, on behalf of these people that they be saved. And you're thinking, no, nah, I can't do that. These people are the worst of the worst. They're um, pedophiles. They're, they're um, murderers. Remember this, is that God was able to reach out to Paul, who persecuted the saints, the church, who killed many Christians, put them by his orders to death. Yet God was still interested in saving him. How much more us and how much more those that we, God has called us to reach out to. And it's not about whether we feel comfortable about it. It's not about whether it fits into our schedule. It's not about whether we don't have the mind or emotionally we're not there. It's about being available to be used of God. In the context of the scripture, Jonah even expressed to the people on board that ship that he was a man that feared God. A man that feared God wants to do everything to please God. He wants to do everything to obey God. And so Jonah was conscious of what he was doing. He made that decision. But God, so rich in grace and mercy and love, said, you know what, in spite of Jonah, you know what? My purpose will still be fulfilled. And uh, I just love this story. And uh, thank you, Cheryl, for sharing it. You know, we can be in rebellion, in gross rebellion, and yet think we're justified because what? We're still doing we're still, I'm still a man of God. I'm still a woman of God. 
I'm still a child of God. I'm still a daughter of God. I'm still a son of God. Yet those that God will embrace, truly embrace, are those that are obedient. Those that are obedient to do his will and not their own will, who will put him first and not put themselves first or put their opinions first. And so we thank God for his grace and his mercy and his love. In looking beyond the faults, God will look beyond our faults. See our needs, but also see the needs of those people that God has called us to be a witness to. And so God will be gracious to forgive us so that we can be forgiving towards other people. And this is the essence of this old scripture, is that God saw the greater picture, yet Jonah only saw the narrow picture. To obey God is better than the sacrifice, the act of worship, or even to say, I love you, Lord, or I worship you, Lord, or I praise you, Lord. And yet we're not doing what God has truly called us to do. So it's important to be obedient to serve God in every respect. And when we fail to do that, is to repent. Not just feel sorry, but repent. Turn away from that attitude. Turn away from that behavior and say, look, God, cleanse me, wash me, make me whole, make me clean. Renew my mind, renew my emotions, renew, renew my will, renew my purpose. Make it very clear before me, my assignment, so that I may walk in complete uprightness, in right relationship with you. Bless God that God, in the end, was able to minister to the Ninevites and that they were delivered. And ultimately, they were delivered. Whether Jonah completely changed his attitude is another thing, but he was more important. He was more interested in the plant dying than the people of the Nineveh dying. And uh, so, God's grace is forever abounding, and His love. So bless, bless you. I just wanted to add a bit more because there's so much more if you look into it you see our disobedience as well can bring confusion amongst other people can bring turmoil into our lives and we might say well that's got nothing to me nothing to do with me but you know what if you only obey you'll see the fruit of obedience and it has, that fruit of obedience can have ramifications from generation to generation, it's important that we obey God in every respect, in every respect. Praise be to God. Bless you. Bless you again, um, Seema and, and uh, Cheryl. Um, Junior, you got your hand up. Go ahead. Amen. Uh, morning. Bless you, uh, Sister Cheryl, for bringing that. Um, I guess it's no coincidence that the Lord is bringing words about leaders again. Um, as you know, I was been sharing before about how the Lord's been impressed on my heart, uh, especially to pray for leaders and people who uh, minister, who stand before people, regardless if they've got a title or not, who minister, whether to their neighbors or whatever. Um, because it's not an easy job, as you heard, uh, Jonah, uh, trying to run away from the responsibility that the Lord says, well, <laughs> now it's time that I, I need to choose you out the lot, out the bunch, to do such and such. And this is what I want you to do. And sometimes as leaders, regardless if they're established or not, um, or the ones that is finding their feet, but more so, the ones that estab that is established, uh, like uh, Pastor Christian said, they're humans. We are humans. I think she even Cheryl said that we're all humans who make mistakes. 
But at the same time, there's so much pressure that is always mounted up on leaders in general um, to not just to bring the word, but to bring the word of God. Because you could bring any word, but don't bring the word of God. And one thing uh, I heard Sister Shout uh, men uh, mention, and, and and I'll say this, and I'll I'll pray um, into that is is a uh, like she said, it's not about having a a, a religious religious life, but have a sort of salvation life, and that's the best thing, because you see, many many of us as leaders um, that might be on this platform, and I'll call all of us a leader because, like I said, in respect we minister to, to others, whether it be our neighbors or whatever, or, or a massive congregation, doesn't matter. Um, but like as sort of like leaders, we ourselves um, intend to, it, it's so hard when you're trying to live a life for God, but the responsibilities that surrounds you according to living right and to be, that not even just a role model, but be that principle of God's image to everyone. To it's not easy to do that on a day in day out basis, and it's very difficult, you know. And um, our flesh part of us want to be able to hold back, but living a life that is not just a religious life, but a salvation life. And I think often even Keith mentioned. That one of the scriptures that scares him the most is that when we go up to that final day and the father said to us, we, uh, I don't know you, you know, move away from me. I don't know you, you know, uh, it, it's you don't want to be in that path because you try to live a life where you're not being true to the Holy Spirit. And God knows you as leaders. God knows your heart in and out. He's the one that called you. And sometimes. We get to that point maybe as leaders, and I'm only using leaders as a terminology right now to just kind of uh, uh, put across the point. But as leaders, it's like we need to be true to the Holy Spirit, true to the people that we are around. I'm not saying you should say, hey, this is my weakness and whatever the lot is. But when we pretend always, we start to live. Someone said, fake it till you make it. No, we don't do that. We shouldn't be doing that in Christianity. Don't come over here faking nothing till you make anything because all you're making is the, the devil's camp. That's all you're making. So let's not come with the fake it, make it mentality. But you want to be genuine, be true to the call of God, the person of God. I could imagine Jonah himself at a particular moment of time before God called him. He was living a life and saying, yes, you know, I'll do anything for God. I'm just stipulating using things uh I'll, I'll, I'll do anything for god and and then till the point that god call upon him and go okay so i heard you and um i'm gonna rein in that chip i'm, I'm gonna call in that part that you said you'll do anything for me and he said yeah i want you to go to this people oh those those people couldn't you not tell me to go to you know um where they're nicer, maybe over in the West End where people are a little bit more nicer and they look decent, but you're telling me to go to the jungle? Mm, um, and this is how we are. Sometimes we live under that banner, not being true to the Holy Spirit as leaders. Because trust me, it's quite difficult. It's quite hard sometimes when we, uh, <laughs> when we have to put ourselves to have, um, you'd call it consecration always, to go to the Father, seek the Father, to go before him, to hear what the Lord has to say about the, uh, for the people. I heard Chris said even this morning that <laughs> you don't know the weight it is, that we have to, how much people depend, even though they want to pretend like they don't need a leader, but yet still, they are still pressed to look towards a leader according to hearing something from the from, from the Lord to comfort their hearts in their situation, regardless of wherever that is. How are you going to get that message, so to speak? If you if if you if you don't God don't find someone who is living an honorable life, a consecrated life to bring you that word. Not saying God can't bring you the word, because obviously Jonah has been disobedient, but God still speak to him, 
Sister Cheryl said, even in the spite of her mess, God still spoke a word to her. And she's still able to encourage others around her, despite what she's going through. And many others on the platform, the same. But it, it will come to a man's uh, in a point in a man's life where you need to say, Lord, okay, I'm going to consecrate myself for you and be true. Be true to who you say, uh, say I should be. And all the way through Jonah's story, you see as God called him to be a prophet, a leader, to, to go to the people, to speak to them. And even when he decided to be obedient and went to the people, his heart was still not in the right place. But God still fed him. God still sheltered him. God still, God still looked after him. So as leaders, and I want to join our hearts this morning in prayer for our leaders. And I'm not talking about the people. I'm not talking about your presidents of this UK and the world. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who goes before the Father and try their best to be very honorable and very true to the Holy Spirit. Because remember what uh, Jesus said to the lady at the well. There's a time that is coming where there will be a bunch of people who will worship me in spirit. He'll be seeking after people who worship him in spirit and in truth. So not just the side where you see religiously when you go to church every day and you see your pastor and your, your preachers and teachers and whatever the lot is, or people who happen to be a, a, a believer and goes about and their life, regardless if they have a title or not, and they're claiming to be something that their life in the secret, in the shadows, are not. I want us to join hearts and earnestly pray for those people who truly love God like Jonah. Who true those ministers who truly love God like Jonah, but happen to just be caught up with the the crowd of the 21st century, who's caught up with the distractions of the 21st century, who want their church to be like the rest. As uh, some people would say, they're trying to do church to attract the world instead of trying to do God that the world may be attracted to God, not the opposite way around. Let us pray for those leaders who are serving, but is falling to temptation and is covering it and is suffering inside. Let us pray for those leaders that has to go before the face of God and repent on my behalf and your behalf. Let us pray for those leaders who their life, in the shadow is not God, what God wants it to be, but God still favor them and love them and still try to help them before that, before that bitter um, end where their life will, where God will manifest what is in the darkness with his light. And let's also pray for those leaders that God has used his light to manifest what was in the dark and expose them Someone would say they're false prophet or whatever. But there is people that love God that just get caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time and allow Satan to, to demolish their lives. Let us pray for those ones that God will have mercy and forgive them and that they will come back onto the time of salvation, as we've heard this morning, and repentance and live a life that is holy and pleasing to the Father, that he may be pleased, that on the day of judgment, he won't just say to me and Pastor Chris and Sister Cheryl and all the people who ministered and is on this platform to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. But he also may say to that person who we've prayed for this morning, that, that, that minister, we all have someone in mind, perhaps, that we minister, that we will see in the line and we hear them say and hear God said to, to this person, well done, my good and faithful servant, and we will rejoice together. Let us put our hearts and let's pray. Father, we intercede on behalf of all the leaders. And Father, I use a point of contact for Pastor Chris, for Raphael. Father, for all our brothers and sisters who goes out and minister. And, in, and, and even at this point for Sister Cheryl, as she's taken on a role to lead her household and her neighborhood of whomever, Father Lord, will come in, come in and listen and be attentive to hear as according to her Bible study. 
we pray for all of these people that we're mentioning as a point of contact to every person on this platform, Father Lord, who is a minister. We pray in the name of Jesus that you, Lord, will uphold them with your mighty right hand. Every single person on this platform, Father, that encourages another person, who often speak to people, who often, Father Lord, lift uh, their voices in prayer for another, for their leaders as well. Because, Father, seeking your face for all, for the generation, for, Father Lord, the populations that we are around, makes us a leaders in our own right, even if we don't have a title. We pray for all these people, all of us here this morning, that, Father, you will have mercy, first of all, on our souls, that, Father Lord, wherever we fell short, Wherever, Father Lord, sin has hooked us to this path of life, wherever our flesh has caused us to stumble, wherever our mindset has restricted us from hearing your word, we pray for forgiveness. For as we heard, Father Lord, that obedience is better than sacrifice. And most of us, Father Lord, are bringing sacrifices because, Father Lord, we fall short. But help us, Lord, to be obedient then no more, no need our feet. The leaders of our generation, Father, will have to present sacrifice. But because of their obedience to you, because of your people that has prayed right now, because of your people that has believed and lift one voice right now, yeah. believing by faith, trusting in your every word, that, Father, they will be made whole in the name of Jesus. That you will manifest your glory upon them. That you, Father Lord, will cause them to make right their lives before you. Before you humble them publicly. Before, Father Lord, you expose what is in the dark publicly. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Asking, Father, for your forgiveness of sins on behalf of the, these leaders. On behalf of these people, Father Lord, who yet you have entrusted, you, Father Lord, have entrusted people, the sheep, too. We pray that, Lord, that our eyes will be open this morning in discernment to be able, Father Lord, to sift through, to see where the troubles are coming from, to be able to deal with them. And we pray that, Father Lord, you will. Allow, equip us, in fact, that not just with discernment, but with wisdom, with knowledge, with understanding, with compassion, with love, in order to deal with those wolves in sheep clothing. Hmm. That, Father, even the wolves will be converted to sheep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even the wolves. Their eyes will be open from their deception of the enemy. For as your word says, the adversary, the devil, our adversary, is out like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. He's out, Father Lord. He's the accuser of the brethren. Ready to deceive the, the creation that you have made so beautifully and wonderfully in, in your likeness and in your image. That is deceiving them, Father Lord. That whom you have called, he's deceived. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. That Father Lord, as we are here this morning, calling on to you, believing in your word, hearing the word that you have sent this morning. is no coincidence that you have caused my heart to, to be led to pray for leaders this year to intercede for people who stand before others, who encourage others, who speaks to their family, who is the mediator between their family. <laughs> Father, I thank you for these people. I thank you for the de their deliverance. I thank you for making them meek and hold. I thank you for your word as a promise to them to be yea and amen. I thank you for continue to looking out for them. But I pray their strength in the name of Jesus. I pray their, knowledge, their, their understanding will be at a deeper and a higher level. 
I pray for wisdom to be theirs. Using the leaders on here as a point of contact. Every single person. I pray, Father Lord, at our house, we will say like David, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord and it shall be as it is and it shall be as you have ordained it to be. Father, purify your people this morning. Purify our hearts. As the songwriter said, let it be as gold and precious silver. Purify it, Father Lord, that we as go through the purging, that we'll come through strong. Because as your word says, every foundation will be tested and tried by fire. So Father Lord, here we are. That as we are tested and tried, help us as leaders, as people who love the Lord with all our hearts, all our souls and our mind. That Father Lord, we won't slip, stumble. And even so, we are thanking you for people that is around us to help us to be able to, to get back up on our feet, dust ourselves off, and to start on our journey again. We thank you, Father Lord, for the support that you placed around us, for the people who are praying for us. Father, for the generation who knows how to intercede and pray. And here we are interceding on the behalf of the people who you have sent to the world in dangerous places. We thank you for Adam in Pakistan, who's going through, Father, these areas, being a where, where believers, uh, their lives have been threatened by Muslims who, Father Lord, so even in Nigeria, where they're killing Christians for sport, for fun. Father, remember those Christians, Lord, in the Thailand areas. Father Lord, in China, hallelujah, where, Father, people have to hide to have church because they've been persecuted and killed and, and, be, and been made ashamed. Father, all the countries of the world that yet Christians, Father, have to run for their lives. Ministers who are standing in these positions, I pray for great strength for them. I pray for boldness for them. Even, Father Lord, if they stand to be martyred, let their blood, Father Lord, cry out. Hallelujah. Let their blood cry out. That, Father, we know that yet they will be exonerated because to be absent here is to be present with the Lord. So I thank you for their boldness. I thank you for their courage. I thank you for choosing them. And I pray they strength up. And I pray, Father Lord, in their weakest hour, show up, Lord. Present yourself to them, Lord. Visit them, Father, in every part of their lives. As we remember our brothers and our sisters across the world. For as as the word says, that Father, for our suffering of this time shall not compare to the glory that shall be revealed in us. So I thank you, Father, for my brothers, my sisters that is here who represents those people across the world that might be going through persecution. We pray, believe in by faith, and we leave it in your hands, Lord. And we say, you said, Father, Lord, if our faith is small as a mustard seed, you said anything we pray for, Anything we ask in the name of Jesus, by faith, believing that is we already have it, we believe, Father Lord, that the strength, their strength, is being uplifted. Their morals, their mind, is being uplifted. So I thank you, Father Lord, for trials come to make us stronger, and we believe that we have overcome <clears throat> that dragon by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies as leaders. In Jesus' most victorious and honest and truthful name, we pray. Amen and amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. May his name be glorified forever. In Jesus' most gracious name. Bless you guys. Thank you for listening. Amen and amen. Thank you, Junior. Thank you for that heartfelt prayer. And uh, so poignant in so many areas. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm still here and I'm still reflecting on Jonah and, uh, you know, God, um, let me just say this to you. I'm going to say this in all honesty. It doesn't matter how you feel about yourself in terms of your ability or your capability or your responsibility. 
God doesn't look at that. God looks at your availability just to do what he's called you to do. One thing I've learned is that what God calls me to do, he equips me to do also. He gives you, God has given each and every one of us the authority, the delegated authority to do as Christ did when he walked upon this earth. And there's times when the devil would bombard us with situations and circumstances in our life. And we think, no, I'm not in a position to do that. The timing is wrong. No, I, I can't be dealing with that now, Lord. I'm not emotionally there. I'm not mentally there. I'm not spiritually there. God does, doesn't look at, look at that. Jonah is an example of that. Though he was a prophet, he was far from where God want him to do, wanted him to be. He was actually in rebellion, direct rebellion to God's word. It wasn't a situation like a King Saul where he assumed he was as presumptuous to think that he was doing what God called him to do. Jonah knew exactly what he was doing. And what I'm saying, and I'm going to encourage you, is that keep on keeping on. Pursue the will of God. Pursue the purpose of God. Pursue it with a hunger and a desire. Once you do that, God gives you momentum. He will give you the heart and the spirit and the will and the ability to just step out in faith, to go beyond where you believe it's impossible. God will enable you to do the impossible. Signs, wonders, and miracles will follow you. The commission is always for us to go. When we go, God comes up, comes up. Beside us, the Holy Spirit is there to partner us in terms of what we are called to do. And God's mercy and his grace is still out there extending towards those that we are called to witness to. God's grace. Don't look at yourself. Don't, don't be burdened down with the responsibility of thinking, you know what, the onus is on me. All God wants you to do is stand in the gap. Be his mouthpiece. Be his authority here on earth. Decree and declare. Affirm and confirm. God will bring the signs and he will bring the wonders. And uh, just in closing, I just really want to... <laughs> God reassigned. Even when, even when Jonah messed up, God reassigned him to go back to the people again and preach to them. When he did that, when he was able to do, whether he was in agreement with God or not, he did what God instructed him to do. In, verse, in chapter, Jonah chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, the people of Nineveh believed and trusted in God, and they proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth in penitence, mourning from the greatest even to the least of them. And it says, in verse 10, it says, when God saw their deeds, that they turned from their wicked ways, then God had compassion and relented concerning the disaster which he had declared that it would bring upon them and he did not do it in other words this is a condemnation that would have fell on Nineveh if they didn't consecrate themselves and separate themselves unto God and it says in chapter 4 and verse 1 and 2 because now God addresses Jonah again and he says but it is but it greatly displeased Jonah and he became angry he prayed to the Lord and said, oh, Lord, is this not what I said when I was still in my country? That, that is why I ran to Tarshish, because I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and great in loving kindness. When sinners turn to you, you revoke the sentence of disaster against them. 
And I just really want to leave you with that thought. It doesn't matter what the extremes, the extremes of what a person does, the depth of sin that they're in. It doesn't matter to God. God is not concerned about whether you can make yourself right or righteous. God is saying that I'm the one that makes you righteous through Jesus Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Once we believe on him, Jesus has already paid the price. It is sealed. It is done. It is, uh, is ratified for eternity in Christ. That's the important thing. God is slow to anger. And so we shouldn't be afraid of God. We shouldn't be terrified of God. We should be in fear and awe of God, wanting to please him, wanting him to worship him, wanting him to give, give our best to him, our, our first fruits to him. Our first fruits is ourselves. Give your give God your best and he will truly do the rest and that's what I've learned is that it doesn't matter about you can't compare yourself with other people because you know what you are unique each and every one of you you're unique and God is saying to you if you're faithful in the little he will make you ruler over much God will do extraordinary things in and through you that you will marvel at and say how did this happen how did you do this god is god and god is no respecters of persons i'm saying all of you are ministers of god you've all been given the ministry of reconciliation the ability to draw men onto god because the holy spirit dwells on the inside of you and the holy spirit is the drawing factor the person of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You have an evangelist on the inside of you. You have a savior that resides on the inside of you. One who's already paid the price. All we need to do is stand in the gap as a mediator and extend the heart of God to hum humanity. Don't write anybody off. Every person is a candidate for salvation and when we pray let us not only just pray for whom we perceive that god might want to save pray for everybody that salvation will visit them salvation will come to the door of their heart and see what god will do i've experienced the miracle of god in a muslim nation amongst amongst arabs where god has saved arabs not only saved them but healed them and baptized them with the holy spirit with evidence of expressing the gifts of god within an hour them being healed totally healed physically healed to the wonderment of everybody in beholding what is happening the team that was with us we saw it firsthand God is no respecters of person. It doesn't matter what, what tribe they are. It doesn't matter what faith they are, what belief system they are, whether they're witches, warlocks, devils, demons. What God would ever, obviously never save a devil or a demon. But what I'm saying is that even if they're possessed with demons and devils, God can deliver them. That is God's desire. That is God's desire. And I'm just going to pray. I'm going to pray for every one of you. And then we're going to just bring the meeting to a close. I just want to pray this, that God will just open our eyes, that we will see from a God perspective who we are. Who we are. These signs shall follow them that believe. We are all believers here. That believe. We shall cast out devils we shall speak with new tongues we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover that's a believer's authority so when we when we stand we stand to represent christ the god almighty god jehovah god 
we stand as a representative, as an ambassador. And when you're an ambassador you, for a country, you represent that country and you have diplomatic immunity. When the devil sees you, he says, look out, I can't touch these people. They're God's people. They're, in effect, he looks at us as being Christ. Christians, little anointed ones. And it's important to understand the authority that we have. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for each and every one of us. Every person in the hearing of your voice, Father God, from this morning, as Cheryl would uh, just present that music, that recording, even as we would meditate on the very words of that recording, Father. Not only that, that Cheryl would just present her person, her vulnerability in terms of being called to do something, knowing that a dependency is totally on you. Father, I thank you that you enabled her to speak as an oracle of you and minister with the ability that you have given her. That Father, you in and through her might be glorified. And Father, I thank you for her steps of obedience that even now that she's finding strength and encouragement and boldness even to step out beyond a security or a comfort zone. And Father, it is the same for each and every one of us. Whatever we've been called to do, we may be in the process of delay and saying, no, it's when I, I, I get a bit more word on the inside of me. It's when I, I can just speak to my children or, or whatever the case might be. Father, it starts now. Now faith is, now faith is, not yesterday, not today, not tomorrow, but now faith is. And so Father, I believe that as we step out in obedience to you and we call upon your name and we have expectancy, Father God, that as we call, as we decree and declare that you will confirm every word through us with signs following, Father God, that signs, wonders, and miracles will follow to your honor and to your glory and to your praise, and that your kingdom will be advanced here on earth, your purposes, your assignments, your will for humanity will be advanced, Father God, and that, Father, it will remove our prejudices. Father, I thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love right now. Let it be known that the very seed that has to germinate in every believer is that we're called. We're called to be a witness of your light. And so as we go forth as light, darkness will flee. And that you will be lifted up and be glorified. So I thank you for the anointing upon each and every person. The anointing what's separates and sanctifies them as unto a call, as Jesus was anointed, not only with the Holy Spirit, but also with power. And he went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. We have the same mandate, but yet there are things that we are uniquely called to. So Father, define your purpose through each and every person right now. Whatever the talent, whatever the ability, natural ability, whatever the grace upon them, let it be realized in through them as they step out in obedience. And Father, let them open their mouths and decree and declare. Decree and declare as Christ spoke. It was affirmed and confirmed by the, by the Father, his Father, Jehovah God. So shall it be with each and every one of us. Bless us. I rebuke fear, fear of man, fear of the unknown, fear of the future. I rebuke every spirit of fear and intimidation right now in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare boldness and the confidence and the trust in you to do all 
that we are called to do. So thank you, Father. I present each and every person into your hand. Have your own way. Holy Spirit, baptize them and immerse them that they may walk in the confidence that you have called them to. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen.